Good evening, brothers and sisters. I hope this video finds you doing well. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I hope that you have had a, a great day and I hope that your holidays are going well for you. Um, as, as always, I do ask and solicit your prayers for those who are sick and shut in. Also, those who are in bereavement, those who are um, going through some kind of depression during this time of year because of lost loved ones and reflecting upon them. But we do pray for their strength in the Lord and their comfort. Amen. Um, we just thank God and looking forward to this up and coming year, just believing God's going to do some wonderful works in 2024. God has really showed himself strong in 2023 and he's brought us up to the last Wednesday of 2023 and we thank God for it. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord and we ask that you um, pray for us and pray with us as we as we give this word. But before we go into our uh, lesson for tonight, I ask that you come and join me in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus thanking you for being so good to us, thanking you for all the many fold blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, you've brought us um, from January 1st, 2023 up until the last Wednesday of this year. Father, we pray that you continue to bless. We look forward to what you're going to do in 2024. We see changes coming, Father, and I know that I know that it's all because you've orchestrated it to be that way. Father, give us the strength and the courage to go forth in your name and do what you have ordained us to do. These and other blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And our word for today, our word for today is found in the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, the 71st number. And we want to read verses 4 through 6. And we're going to read from the New King James Version. The 71st number of Psalms, verses 4 through 6. And we're reading from the New King James Version. And the writer says, deliver me. O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, O oh Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall continually be of you. Amen. Amen. And we'd like to speak to you from a thought today. We are in his hands. We are in his hands. This world in which we live in is, is full of, of sin and evil. And this world is full of, of wicked people. There are threats and dangers everywhere and, and, and all the time. There are threats and dangers to ourselves and and to our, our loved ones and our family and friends. They're all around us. And even when things seem safe and secure, the possibility of an attack is ever present. It should seem that we should have no worries, even in church, praising and worshiping the Lord. But even in church and in synagogues and, and houses of worship. It's so sad to say that we still have to be mindful of threats and dangers. This past Christmas on Monday, those churches who are having Christmas services were at high alert of the threats that, and the dangers that were, that were out there. Amen. You can just look at the news of, of of the church bombings and the synagogues and people coming in, shooting folks um, as they're worshiping and praising God. And and, you know, they're always in the back of their mind is somebody out there to get us. Is somebody going to come in here having a bad day and do something to us? A Amen. And I don't care how long you've been saved. You are not exempt. Your church is not exempt. I don't care who your pastor is. You are not exempt. Whether you like it or not, we must live and walk amidst and among this wicked and evil world. Amen. And knowing 
that there are threats and dangers, we know also that we need some sort of protection. We need the kind of protection that only the Lord can give. Amen. We need the Lord God to deliver us from the hand of the wicked. In Matthew 6 and 13, when Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Master, teach us how to pray. And in, in, in that 13th verse, Jesus told them, when you're praying, I want you to, inc I want you to include this in your prayer. And when he, when he spoke the model prayer, he said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. See, and we need to walk, see, and we need Jesus to walk with us and our loved ones through, through life and to keep us from falling into the snares of the wicked. Amen. See, the psalmist said in Psalm 141 and 10, he said, let the wicked fall into their own nets while we escape safely. And in other words, what he was saying is that our prayer should be, Lord, let those who lay traps for us fall into their own traps and deliver us unharmed. Amen. That's what our prayer should be. When we're praying to the Lord, Lord, we know that folks are going to set traps and snares for us. But we do pray that let them fall in their own traps that they set before us and your hand deliver us because we depend on you. Amen. And there's a reason why we can expect the Lord to walk with us and help us. And we should take this main reason into this new and upcoming year of 2024. The main reason for expecting God to protect us is that we trust him. Plain and simple. We trust God. We may not be able to trust anybody else, a brother, a sister, a friend, mom and daddy. We might not be able to trust any other human being, but we can trust God. And God's protection should be an expectation as it was the, with the three Hebrew boys when Nebuchadnezzar threatened them to be cast into the fiery furnace. And the boy says, we ain't even worried about answering you because the God that we serve is able to deliver us out of your hands. Amen. And God is just like that. And we should we should have our dependence on God the same way and know that we're in God's hands. Amen. The psalmist who, who, who wrote our text for today from the perspective of an old man, he was writing it as an old man in his old age. And, and, and he said, for some of us, we've trusted the Lord God from our youth. But then there's others who, who were not saved at the time. We can look back and we can see some of the things that we've gone through and we can boldly declare if it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Because we do know that even though we weren't saved and some of the things that we've been brought out of. We know that it was nobody but God who did it, even though we were not we were not loving God like we should. We were not praying to God and praising God. God still brought us out of some stuff that we know was not happenstance or we know that no man could have brought us out of. Boy, I wish I had some help up in here. See, all of our lives, all of our lives, the Lord God has proven and provided us with protection thus far, and there's no good reason to believe that he's going to stop now. Amen. My faith tells me that that what God did back then, God can do it right now and God is going to do it in the future. God is going to God is going to continue to be God in our lives. Amen. We can count on the Lord's protection. David said that the Lord is my shepherd in that 23rd Psalm and I shall not want. In other words, David is saying that if we truly trust God, like sheep trust their shepherd. If, if we truly trust God, we have to depend on him totally for all our needs. Amen. And that includes our protection. Amen. See, the Lord even saw to our safety from birth. That's what the psalm writer said. Even when we were born, the Lord protected us. Even before we were able to trust him, he was still taking care of us. Boy, that's shouting news right there. See, and some of you, I know some of you out there saying 
Because some of you love to debate and say this. Some of you out there saying, Pastor, you don't know what I've been through and, and you don't know how I've been hurt and all the things I've been through in my life. And that is so true. I do not make light of the plight that you may have gone through and the, the sufferings you may have gone through. And I don't know what you may have been through. But if you are saying that to me, if you're listening to this to me, there is one thing that I do know that is true. You are still here. And if you're still here, that means that you still have purpose and God has purpose. And God is the one that brought you through all of that stuff that you have been through. Amen. Although we may have to go through some some difficult times and although we may have some some enemy attacks, the Lord God still upheld us and delivered us from all of that mess. That's why David wrote in Psalm 34 and 19, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. Amen. You got to have that conjunction but in there because it contradicts everything that was before. We've gone through some stuff. He said, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And we all have a testimony of something that God has delivered us out of. Boy, that's good shouting news right there. Amen. When we think of all the threats and the dangers that are out there. Amen. And we think of all the things in, in life that could have destroyed us or could have destroyed our, our, our loved ones. When we think of all the times of disaster it could have could have taken us out, but it didn't. We turn to the Lord God with gratitude and we have to tell him thank you. A little short testimony. Um, 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 Junior was was coming from Pula yesterday and. And he was riding on Highway 16 and, you know, there's all sorts of traffic out there. And he had a blowout on on one of his back tires. And, he, and, and, and the Lord was with him and he pulled over on the side of the road and he called me and he was like, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. He said, Dad, I just had a blowout, but my tire just blew off my car. And and, and I said, son, you all right? all right? He said, I'm fine. I'm fine. He said, oh, thank you, Jesus. He was just praising God on the phone. And um. And, and, and just like that, he said, Dad, I was riding right next to an 18 wheeler. And when the tire blew off, it shook a little bit, but I was still calm. And that just shows how God had him. A Amen. And, that, and we were riding home and I was telling him, I said, son, that's why we pray so much that the hand of the Lord stay with us because that could have been the other way. That could have, his tire could have blown out. He could have lost control and went under that 18 wheeler. But God had him. We were in the, he was in the hands of the Lord. Amen. And we got to have that faith every time we leave our house, every time we get on the road, every time we're somewhere other than our homes. We got to believe that the hand of the Lord is on us and we are in his hands and we are in his protection. Amen. He's our bodyguard. He's our shield and our buckler. Amen. And we need to take that faith. That God is with us into 2024 with boldness and say that the same God that kept us thus far is the same God that's going to lead us on. Amen. 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 We thank you for joining us and we hope that we've said something, something that's encouraging um, to you. Looking forward to going on into 2024. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for viewing this video. Thank you for the support that you've given us these past three years. It's been so good. And we just thank God for all of you. And we ask that you share this video. Amen. That God, this word that God has given us this last Wednesday of, of this year, share this video with someone who needs that encouragement, that encouragement to let them know that we are in God's hands. Amen. We are in the hands of the Lord. And Jesus said he was when he was praying to God, he said, Lord, who who you put in my hand, nobody can snatch them out. And I'm glad to testify and be a witness that I know that I'm in the hands of the Lord. Amen. And you should be able to testify that with all faith that you are in the hands of the Lord. Also, amen. Amen. And if you ever find yourself out there in the in the Blarney area or in Baxley, um, just come on on Sunday morning. Just come on out to miss. But we, we would love to have you. Amen. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. 
and morning worship begins immediately after uh, around 11 15 11 30 so come on out we would love to have you in fellowship with us um, in that Blarney area out there amen Amen. If you want to partner with us and sow a seed into this ministry, you are more than welcome to. This is good ground over here. If it was not, I would not I would not boast what the Lord has done and what the Lord is doing to this place. It's good ground out there. And we just thank God for all that he is doing. So if you want to sow a seed into this ministry, please feel free to do so. Personal check, cashier's check, money order. And mail it to the address found at the bottom of that screen. That's Mizpah Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, zip code 31515. Amen. Also, also um, stay in prayer. Keep stay in prayer for our sick and our shut in. We have a, we have a, a few members that are sick and that are going through. But God is still in the healing business and in the blessing business. So we do solicit your prayers for our sick and our shut in. And also those in bereavement, we do um, ask prayer um, for um, the, the Howard family who lost a loved one on Christmas morning. So we do ask prayer, solicit your prayer for them. We solicit your prayers for those who are going through, who have lost a loved one. And during the season uh, of sadness, we ask for their strength and their comfort in the Lord. Amen. We want you to stay safe out there. Um, the flu, RSV. COVID, all of those things are out there. Um, so we ask that you you make sure you stay well, okay, and stay safe. Um, you get that little scratchy throat or whatever, you go ahead and you start medicating yourself with prayer because God can work through the medicine. I know I am a witness. Amen. So stay safe out there. When you're going to different places, please protect yourself. Amen. I got to get out of here. I love you. I ask that you continue to pray for me. Amen. We will not have a watch night services. We will not be having watch night services. We're going to have regular services on December 31st. That's this coming Sunday, the last Sunday of the year. We're going to have regular services. I'm looking for a high time in the name of the Lord. And then on that Wednesday, that following Wednesday, the first Wednesday of the year, January 3rd, we will have in person face to face. Bible study. This this will be a church meeting discussing the different things coming up this coming year. Amen. We won't get too deep into studying the Bible, but we will let you know where we're going to come from the following week. And we're going to do a series, but we um, will come back with that. But we will have a meeting talking about um, disclosing the things that are coming up in 2024 if it is God's will. Amen. Amen. I got to get out of here. Um, I hope you have the, the rest of the evening be a blessed evening for you. We are so looking forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. So take care, be safe and, and hope to see you soon.